In this ultimate guide to animation in Maya, I'm going to show you uh, how to begin animating. I'll start from the very scratch to how you actually get this uh, software for free. Now don't get too excited. This free version is dedicated just for the students or your practicing animation. So you can't actually use it for business or money. Now this, uh, if you know how to use Maya, you know how to navigate around it. This video is not going to be useful for you. I'm going to put the outline in the description below and you can so, so you can just jump to a certain area of this video uh, to learn about different things so you don't have to just listen through the whole thing all right so now let's begin now in this website you can get this is where you can get your maya for free uh the student version you just need to put in your details your your create account and such it's pretty simple and then they'll send you a copy in your email yep so i'll just put this link in the description now install it and then we'll get into uh, this maya this uh, window so when you first Maya, when you first launch your Maya, this is what you'll see. So let's do the very first thing, which is the settings. Now if you go down the bottom right, bottom right, you see a gear and a silhouette of a person running. Animation preference should pop up. And this is where you put your animation settings. So if you want to do like uh, 24 frames per second, so you go down to this uh, settings tab. You can set it to 24 frames per second, 25, 30, uh, so far, uh, 24 frames is usually for like um, America, uh, anything that's produced in America. 25 is usually for anywhere else in the world. All games would be like 30 frames per second, and so forth. So let's set. I'll set mine to 24. Uh, that's what I usually go for. Now we go to the animation tab. You want to make sure this auto key is checked on. I'll show you what it is. It's very important that you check this on. Just make sure it's on, and then uh, tangents. Check that to weight the tangent. And these set them to auto. And again, I'll explain this later on why it's important to set this. This is a, has an auto save function if you want it. So it will save a backup every so forth, every 10 minutes, 20 minutes. You can set it that way. I'm going to turn it off for the moment. Now the next thing, time slider. You want to make sure this is select on real time. So you can see it's, you can see that it's set on 24 frames per second. So wherever you, whatever you set right here, it will change to that. So that therefore mine is set to 24 frames per second. Undo. Default is finite 50. You want to set it to infinite. So you can undo as many times as you like. Now hit save. Now next thing we're going to do is create a project folder. So this project folder, any of your assets, your sounds, your play blast, uh, your scene files would just go into this folder. So it's, it makes it more organized so it's not all over the place. Go up here, file, project window down here. Now let's create a new one. So we hit the new. You can rename, rename it to uh, whatever whatever you like. You can set your location wherever you prefer. And these are all the folders that were uh, created in your project folder. So it's, you can see it's organized by images, uh, scenes, play, uh, movies, uh, which is a play blast, sounds, clips, etc. Now after that, just hit accept. Alright, now this is your viewport, they call this. This is where you navigate your, uh, manipulate your animation. So let's start by creating just a, a polygon just so I get something for you to move around. So when you go up here to the shelf under the polygon tab, hit a cube. When you hit the cube, a cube should pop up right in the center of this grid. Alright, so everything that you create, it will pop up in the center. Now, the, how do you navigate around the scene? If you hold down Alt and you hold and you use the left click, you can rotate around your scene. If you hold down Alt and middle click, you can pan around your scene. Hold down Alt and right click, you can zoom in and zoom out. Alternatively, you can use the middle scroll button to zoom in and zoom out. Right now, you see these little um, middle axis things. They keep changing because I'm hitting W, E, and R. These are how you navigate your objects. So when you hit W, this is how you translate your objects. So you, when you left click and hold, you can move them around. You can move them according to the axis, so you can see these are uh, arrows. These arrows, you can translate this direction, Z or Y. You can do that for rotation, so you hit E, you get rotations, you can manipulate like this. When you hit R, you can scale. This is how you manipulate your objects. Let's move to the timeline, so down here, this is your timeline. This, These numbers are your frames, your frame number. And this bar right here, this is where you set your, your frame range. So you can see it's set to 
1 to 200 and these are the subframes so you can set uh, within those uh, 1 to 200 you can set that range as well so you can see I can I'm set to 1 to 120 you can drag it out to the max which is 200 you can even change this to maybe 500 or less whatever you number whatever numbers you like now I'm going to show you how to set key hotkey for setting keys uh, is the let is the hotkey S so you see this red line this is your keyframe so let's say if you set your keyframe you want your object to be here on frame 1 let's go to frame 30 and we move it here now you see this uh, red line that just pops up automatically it's because we had um, the auto key checked on that's why it's important <clears throat> but just in case I would like to I'm going to hit your S key again to just set the key just so that everything is uh, locked <clears throat> now you go to the middle and you hit play the hard key for play is alt V you can see your object is moving from one end to the other the hard key for moving uh, frame by frame is alt and the period button so you, alt and period you can move forward alt and comma you can move back so keyframes uh, it's a way to tell the Maya where you want to move your certain object at whichever frames that you like alternatively you can use these uh, buttons right here to hit to play back now if you want to go from a keyframe uh, to key, jump from keyframe to keyframe so you want to jump from 1 to 30 it's the period button so when you hit the period button you will jump to the next keyframe you hit the comma button you jump to the previous keyframe let's go ahead and set more keyframes so you can see it so if I hit the period button you can jump from one keyframe to the other now these keyframes you can even manipulate them let's say if you want to move you can move them around by you can batch select your keyframes by holding down shift and drag select the ones the keyframes that you want to move and you get this uh, arrows in the middle so this is how you move your keyframes if you want to move just one just go to that frame and hit shift hold shift and left click now you're only selecting one you can delete your keys by highlighting Hi uh, highlight select your keys right click and hit delete this is the only way to delete your keys if you actually hit the delete key on your keyboard you actually delete the object itself so make sure you're not hitting that delete key right highlight right click delete you can even copy and paste your key your keys so if let's say I want to so let's say I want to copy this key I'll make sure you highlight select so you hold on shift and left click right click copy and let's paste it here somewhere right click and paste now you copy and paste it there on the right side you see this attribute window right so when you select your object you get your attributes uh, these are for this this uh, cube instead of just manipulating from here you can actually manipulate your object from the uh, by playing with these attributes so if I hit if I select um, Y and I middle click drag you can see it going you can see the numbers going up and it's being manipulated as well same thing with uh, any rotations or scaling and such let's just undo that undo it or Z Z is the undo button now I'm going to show you how to uh, create a camera I go up to uh, top left go up to create camera and hit camera so you get this um, this object in your scene this is your camera you can manipulate it just like the cube you can change your camera view to your camera uh, change your camera view your perspective this is your per this is your perspective view you can change it to whatever objects you can change it to perspective of this camera so how we do that is go to panel perspective and camera so you can uh, navigate around this is what your camera is seeing right now this is your point of view in the camera's eye if you want to make sure what your camera is uh, framing if you go up to this resolution gate you get this frame resolution gate mask and you get your resolution number up here too you can right now it's on 965 to 540 you can change it later now on top here you can see other different settings you can turn the grid off if you like you can create this uh, grid looking thing you can create a safe grid right here or a safe title grid now let's say if you want to change your resolution of your camera you can go up here to windows uh, rendering rendering editor render settings now if you scroll under this common tab scroll down to render camera let's change it to camera one which is the one we just created and you can change it here you can use uh, these default templates so let's go for HD 720 so once you realize that once you select your preset 
the numbers change up here. So now it's 1280 by 720. I'll just hit close if this is what I want. You can even rename your camera. Let's say right now default would be camera mod. You can change it, change the name in the attribute window on the right side. Let's change it to main cam. Let's call it main cam. Now let's change. Let's say you want to change back to the perspective mode. Just hit panel, perspective, and persp. Now this is your perspective view. You can see your camera and your cube. You can even hide things on your, your viewport. So if you go up here to show, you can see it's everything is checked on. So let's say if you just want to see this cube. So just select none and then hit it, select polygon. Or unless you want the camera, then show and camera. Now I will show you the graph editor. So to open your graph editor, just go up to Windows, Animation Editor, and Graph Editor. You get this pop-up window. To move around this uh, graph editor, it's the same thing as the view viewport, which you hold down Alt. Um, when you hold down Alt and middle click, you can pan around. You can zoom in with Alt and right click. Now, graph editor is a way to manipulate an your animation uh, in more detailed manner on the left side. These are your values. Value. Alright, and down here, these are your frames. It's so hard to draw with your mouse. Let's look at our box again that we played with. Now when you select your box or your your object, you'll get these curves. These are your uh, the values and frames that it's at. So you can see the curve, it's uh, this going this way. It's control, it's translate X. So you can see the graph, it slowly ease out and ease in. So if I play it back, it slowly ease out and ease in. You can change these uh, curves by selecting these little points. These are your keyframes. And let's say you want to make it straight. So you can hit this uh, button up here, linear tangent. Select the other end. So now when it moves, it's just straight. It doesn't uh, ease, ease out ease in. <clears throat> so this is how we manipulate our animation. You spend most of your time in here. When you add in more keyframes, you get more dots. So whatever you do, whatever you manipulate in your graph editor, it will appear in your animation as well. So if I move this around, it will be, it be influenced. You can select them, you can filter them out too. So let's say if you just want to look at the translates. You can just select the translates. Or you want to just look at the rotations, you can do that. Or maybe you just want to look at translate Y. And let's say you want to zoom in to this, this zone that you're working at. If your camera is so far away. You can just select those keyframes, left click, left click and drag over it, and hit F, and you would frame your graph editor into that selected area. You can even um, kind of expand this graph, so you can see the numbers. It's pretty far out right now. It's going from zero to sixty. You want to zoom in? You can hold down Shift and Shift Alt and right click. And just move it up. You can see your you can see it moving closer. You see the numbers changing. You can even uh, zoom into frames as well. So you just need to hold down Shift Alt and right click, but moving to side to side. You can zoom in this way, so it's locked in. These uh, levers right here. These are called uh, tangents or handles um, to manipulate your animation curves. So if you select them and hold down the middle click, you can manipulate them. You can manipulate them. So remember, I mentioned about the weighted tangents that you uh, you did for the settings. Now if you select your your keyframe and right click free tangent weight, you can scale them out like so. So you can manipulate them even further. You can change your viewport, uh, how many windows you like. So right now I have two uh, viewports. Let's say I want uh, three. So uh, windows, you go to the windows, pick one of these uh, saved layouts. Uh, go to view arrangement. So I want a three, three window kind of setup. So I'll just pick Three panes split top. Now I get three different windows. And you want to cust if you want to customize it to your liking, you let's say you want this to be a camera. So we go to panel, perspective. You can change that to a camera view. Up here you can change it to your perspective view. This is where you manipulate your animation. And down here I will have a graph editor. All right, there's three different views. This is my typical setup, uh, depending on what you do. To frame to your object, you can select your uh, object you can and hit F it would frame it, your object or whatever you're selecting All right, let's say this is your animation this is your camera view and you want to play blast into a format where you could 
uh, watch it on VLC, I mean a different video player. So we call it a play blast. So let's say this is your frame range. Go up to here, windows, and you see this play blast button. Let's hit the square first, just to get some settings done. You want to make sure your format is on QT, depending what format you like. Typically, we use QT, uh, QuickTime. You might want to use AVI, depending. So let's pick QuickTime and MPEG4. Quality, let's set it to the highest. Display size, uh, select from window. So from window, it was it would play blast whatever you see here on this window. Scale, let's check that to the highest, which is one. You can pick your location. If you set your project folder, it would automatically go into your movie. It will automatically go into your movie folder. So all you have to do is just change the name to whatever you like. Hit apply, play blast. Now your animation will play back. Let it run. Don't touch anything. And your your video should pop up in whatever media player you're using. And that's all for this video. I hope it helps. I know I didn't go through that much because Maya is is a very complicated tool. It's got a lot of things to learn. So I just want to show you just the essential things that you can actually use to actually start doing something. If you like this video and you like to support, uh, just give me a thumbs up. I'll be making more videos like this, weekly animation videos, little tips, little tricks, tutorials, uh, work in progress, stuff like that, animation related. So subscribe if you like to see things like that. And uh, next time, bye bye.